Hello, my name's Dawn Dickens and I work for the Max Wildlife Trust. And today we're going to be looking at insects again, but we're not actually going to see the insects, but we're going to find evidence that they were there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is this very strange looking thing. This was actually taken off an oak tree. Often you'll find them in clusters like this, quite a few of them together. This is a gall. Now a gall is when a plant, something attacks a plant and changes the plant tissue and um, alters it in a way that will benefit whatever's attacking it. And that thing that attacks it could be an insect, it could be fungus, it could be bacteria, it could be a virus. Usually it doesn't do any harm to the plant, um, but we call it a parasitic relationship because it's the fungus and the insect that wins out and really nothing's given back to the plant. So, oak marble galls. Now, really, really interesting thing about these. These were actually brought over to the UK in the 1800s from the Mediterranean countries. And that was because the um, chemicals in here are high in tannin and they use it for tanning industry. That's where they take leather and change it um, to make it more durable. So the other thing that this does is it makes ink and it's played an incredible incredible role in history. So the Magna Carta was signed in ink made out of gold. Pride and Prejudice, written by Jane Austen, was made, was written in ink made out of this gold. Handel wrote his music in ink made out of this gold. Even Leonardo da Vinci made some of his drawings out of gold ink. And you know, it's still being made today and you can make some as well. Okay, so what you need is you need to get a handful of these galls. Now, please double check that whatever's in it has emerged. Can you see this little hole here? So that's emerged out of it. What lived in here is actually a wasp. Okay, so it's chewed its way out. Now, people think wasps, oh my goodness, they always think of the black and white stripy kind. There are hundreds of different sorts of wasps. They do not all have that black and yellow stripes, okay? Some of them are really, really tiny. The wasp that makes this gall here is actually smaller than my little fingernail. It's a really, really tiny thing. So, you've got your handful of galls. You need to crush them down. That is the hardest thing, because I don't know if you can hear. These are pretty hard. So, either pestle and mortar, or maybe you could borrow um, a food processor and try and chop it up that way. But please ask first because it really, really, they are incredibly hard. Then put that powder in a jam jar and put in some distilled water or rainwater that you've collected. Don't use tap water because there's chemicals in the tap water that might affect the colour of your ink. Set that to one side. Get a second jar. Get yourself a nail, an iron nail. Now you might find some just hanging around in your garden. Just clean the soil off. It doesn't matter if it's rusty. That really doesn't matter at all. Put it in the second jam jar, top it up with cider vinegar, and then just put those jam jars to one side for about a week. At the end of that week, get a third jam jar, get some filter coffee paper, pour one of the jam jars contents through it, let it just strain through, okay? Take that paper, throw it away, get another coffee filter paper, pour the other jar in. And as you do that, you'll notice that it'll go from a brownie colour to quite a dark colour quite quickly. This ink can last quite a long time. The only thing is don't use it in a really nice fountain pen because it's a bit gunky and it might ruin your fountain pen. Why don't you use it with one of those quill pens that we showed you how to use a couple of videos ago. Okay so that is a oak marble gall. The next thing we're going to look at is in this leaf here. And you can see this is a lovely holly leaf. Can you see this pattern just here? Okay. This is a holly leaf miner. And this time, it isn't a wasp, it's actually a fly. So what happens is the fly lays its egg in quite young leaves, because holly leaves can be quite tough, okay? And it's only a tiny, tiny little thing. It lays its egg just near what we call the midrib here, okay? And then 
from June to about November time, that when that egg hatches out in about 10 days time, there'll be a, like a tiny little larvae and it'll chomp its way up the midrib here. November time it comes out and it, it starts eating the really yummy part, the leaf. So a leaf is basically like a sandwich. You've got two loaves of bread and that really nice, yummy sandwich filling. That filling is exactly what that larvae wants. So it chomps around in there and it pupates in March time. Just before it pupates, it actually cuts out a triangular hole in the leaf and that's stuck on the back of the pupa. So when the pupa actually hatches, okay, into that fly, then all it needs to do is push its way out and it's ready to fly off. So there you are. I leave mine the whole life cycle, but I don't know if you can see, this one's had a narrow escape. Can you see just here, this tear here, my phone behind it, that was caused by a blue tit. Blue tits love these larvae. Okay, and here's some more little examples. This one, well, got away with it, didn't get him. Okay, you can see here, this has been torn by a blue tit as well. And unfortunately, I don't know if you can see, this part of the leaf is a light color. It got that one. And here we are, here's another one that's been ripped by the beak of a blue tit. And that one got away with it, look, he's safe down here. So that's a really nice little food chain. You've got the holly leaf, which is the producer. You've got the holly leaf minor larvae, that is a primary consumer. And the blue tit is your secondary consumer. However, the tail does not stop there because what happens is there's another wasp that comes along and actually lays its egg into the larvae. It's got a long ovipositor, which is like a long tube on the end of um, its abdomen, and it pokes it down and into the larvae and lays its egg. And unfortunately, then that parasitic wasp egg hatches and its larvae eats the first one. It's not as easy as that because actually there's a couple of parasitic wasps that do this. There's even a parasitic wasp that lays an egg in the parasitic wasp that laid an egg in the holly leaf miner. It's actually a whole line of about four parasitic wasps that all lay eggs into each other. But the very, very interesting thing about this is we can tell if the holly leaf miner did hatch out fly hatched out because if it did you'll get a triangular hole. If it was parasitic wasp that hatched out it's actually a round hole. Now I'm going to show you on this bit of paper here. Okay it's not really that clear so when we say triangle it's not a really sharp clear triangle but can you see there's definitely three edges to that and they're quite straight. This one probably a parasitic wasp and this one is definitely can you see a circular hole a parasitic wasp okay. So what we're going to do is I've got one, two, three, four, five, ouch, they're very sharp, um, holly leaves here. And we're going to see how many of these have got have exit holes. And if they have, what do we think came out? Was it the holly leaf minor fly or was it a parasitic wasp? So we're going to have a little look. Again, we're using my lovely little... Um, microscope here and we're going to have a little look on the screen now and see and work out how many made it how many didn't. Okay so here's the first leaf that we're going to have a look at and um, we're going to inspect the hole so there we go there's a hole and as you can see on that one perfectly round so I'm afraid that holly leaf miner didn't make it that's one for the parasitic wasps. Here's my second leaf and if you look again, can you see? Very circular hole, parasitic wasp again. Okay. Fourth leaf, here we go. Now this is an interesting one. It looks very, very ripped, but I don't know if you can see, I'll try and point it out. Just up here and just down here. A very distinct, really quite straight lines. So that one actually made it. So I'm gonna put it to one side, so out of three leaves, we've had one holly leaf miner that's made it. Now this one, 
There's actually two on here. That one's been parasitic wasp and that one has as well. So that one didn't make it. We'll have a look at one more. Okay. And that one, it's not so clear. It's not, it's very hard to see. So we're going to put that to one side and say, we're not sure on that one. So out of those five leaves that we looked at, these ones here, they were predated on. They are um, being taken by parasitic wasps. So three of them didn't make it. One of them, we weren't so sure on. We're not really sure. So we can't really decide on that. We're going to put that to one side. And one of them we thought, yes, definitely. So you can see that out of five leaves, one actually survived. And it's actually quite a poor survival rate. Insects, when they do this, where they lay an egg and then go away and leave it, often have a very poor survival rate. So about a third of all holly leaf miners actually make it into a fly. Um, the others are predated on or even taken by that cheeky little bluetit just here. So it's a bit of a tough life. So next time you're on your daily exercise and you pass a holly bush, have a little look, see if you can work out what's happened to that fly. Is it there or isn't it? Now don't forget this time of year as well, we're still waiting for some of the adults to merge. They're usually May to June time, so we're a little bit early. So that might be why our results are a little bit skewed as well, because you'd expect um, the adults to be coming out a little bit later. But it's a really, really interesting exercise. See if you can spot some of the leaves as well, where maybe the blue tits might have taken one. So until next time, have fun wildlife spotting.